In this video, I'm going to show you how to add Python to Wagos PFC controllers. Um, Python can be a useful tool for processing algorithms or interacting with libraries that are only available in Python. Um, we're going to install an IPK. We're going to spin up a very simple Hello World Python script. We're going to call that script from the uh, eCockpit project that we'll write. Uh, you can download the IPK from my GitHub link uh, in the description. And uh, let's get the hardware set up and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the web-based management of the PFC because I want to enable the FTP port. I, I could use the, the software upload to upload the IPK, but I prefer to do it in the um, FTP and then I can go push the, the install through a um, shell script or through, a, through the shell. So web-based management, uh, I'm using firmware 11 here. Uh, nothing else here is, is other than standard firmware. Uh, standard size and all that, so no resizing like node red required. I'll go to ports and services, uh, select network services, and I just want to make sure that FTP is, is enabled here. Um, once FTP is enabled, uh, all we need to do uh, in the browser is get the IPK from GitHub. So um, if you follow the link in the, um, in the description, it'll bring you to the, the GitHub repository. I'm going to download this as a zip, and once that's downloaded, uh, it'll show up here. I'm just going to unzip it, and here we have the IPK. So we'll need this to install into the controller. So I'm going to open my FTP client, and uh, to connect to this, I'm going to go to the IP address. And in the root directory here, I'm just going to drop my IPK. Once this is complete, I can close out of my uh, web-based management. I can close out of my FTP, and I don't need my file explorer anymore. And now uh, we're going to do all this. Well, we're going to do an install in command line. So I, I use this VSSH on Mac. Uh, you can do this with like PuTTY or uh, TerraTerm or something like that. Um, we're just going to shell into this. So um, IP address of port 22 and use the root credentials, which will take you right into the root directory. Um, and if we do a check here, we see our Python IPK. So we'll do ipackage install Python 2.7.9. Now once that's installed, we can now test uh, to make sure that Python's working here. If we just type in Python, it'll open the Python shell. Here in the shell, we can uh, do a little hello world test. Um, we'll just print hello world. Um, we see it returns. We can, uh, you know, do some math if we want. We could say, you know, uh, p is equal to three plus one. Uh, print p. Um, so we can see that Python's working. So we'll exit the shell. And what I'd like to do is just create a very simple little Python script. We'll do a little hello world script uh, that we can then invoke from an eCockpit environment. So. Um, we'll nano uh, pytest.py and in here um, we'll keep it extremely simple. We'll say um, print hello world. We'll save this and we can test it in our own um, in our own shell, in the Linux shell. Um, by calling python uh, pytest.py and you'll see it returns our hello world. So Python's in here, it's working. Um, now we're going to exit the shell and we're going to go to eCockpit. Okay, for the next step, now that we have Python running in the controller, we need to create an eCockpit project that can invoke that script. So uh, the way we'll do that now is um, uh, we're going to create an empty project and after this project opens, we'll add our uh, PFC 200. 
Um, we can scan our network. Okay, now that that scan is complete, uh, we've got all of our controllers here. I want to select this PFC 200. I'm going to accept the selection, including the I.O. modules, and add it to the project. And we won't be doing anything with the I.O., so we can just go straight into the programming window. Okay, that's done. Um, I can go to the programming window. And I need to go to the library manager and uh, add a library to this. Um, that will allow me to invoke shell scripts. So I'll go to the library manager, advanced, or uh, add a library, advanced, and uh, the library I'm looking for is the sysprocess library. So this has a lot of different um, things in it to um, interact with the Linux environment. So uh, the one POU that I'm going to use out of here is sys process execute command 2 and this will allow me to invoke my shell scripts. Um, this is a function so we don't need to even create an instance of it, we can use it directly in our project. So once we've added this library now we can go to our PLC PRG and uh, I'm just going to create a few variables here. So um, we'll start with um, I return characters. This is going to be the integer uh, for how many characters are returned from our shell uh, command. This is going to be uh, s command string. This will be a string variable that we're going to send. In fact, we'll just create this right now. So uh, we're going to invoke this the same way we did in the shell and we're going to um, say this is Python. Uh, since we won't be calling it from the root directory, directory like we were before, we'll have to um, specify the root directory and we'll say pytest.py. So this is going to call python pytest.py. So whatever string we put in here is going to be invoked in the shell. Um, we're going to have a return string. This is uh, going to be the data that is returned by the, the shell. And uh, we're going to call this p uh, result, which is a uh, going to be a, a data type. So um, I believe this is R T S I E C result. I might be wrong. You might have to correct this. Um, okay. So now that that's done, we're going to invoke this shell. So I'm going to say I return char. Uh, is equal to and we need to grab that um, function so we're going to go to module calls uh, sys process and we're going to use the sys process execute command too all right and let's shrink this up so it's a little easier to see so the, co the command is going to be my command string my output is going to be my return string the length, we're just going to hand this a number. I'm going to say uh, 20. Um, this is going to be the output length, so whatever it returns is going to be limited to that number. And then this result is going to be um, our, our p result. And looks like we need to make this a double integer. Let's, let's build ourselves a little gate here um, and kind of clean this project up. That way we can see when all of these um, are working the right way. And then uh, it's not just going to call it constantly. So um, we'll say if x uh, pi test, then uh, we'll, we'll run this. And we'll say um, x pi test equal to false. There we go. So it'll only run this now if we if we toggle this boolean, which will make our lives easier so we don't overrun the CPU. <clears throat> we'll download this now to the controller. Once we're downloaded, we can start um, 
So now we should be able to invoke this script. And you'll see we sent it python root test.py and it returned hello world with a carriage return. So with the simple addition of an IPK, you can see how easy it is to, uh, to use Python in your projects. So uh, please subscribe to the channel, leave your comments uh, and questions in the comment section below, and thanks for watching.